Statistics and Excel, binomial distribution, standard deviation of sample means, otherwise known. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because, apparently, we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com as standard airport number two. Get ready and some coffee because it's time to get realistic with statistics and Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you can start from this point just constructing the tables as we continue or possibly just look at this from a theory standpoint related to statistics and binomial distribution sampling, hypothesis testing, and so on. But if you do have access to this workbook, though, there's currently three tabs down below. We've got the example, the practice, the blank tab, the example, in essence, the answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on, was started from a blank worksheet and will be continued at the blank part of the worksheet and we will be practicing therefore our Excel tools as we build it. Let's give a quick recap of what we've been doing thus far. We're looking at a sampling type of situation but this time looking at a binomial type of situation which can come up, up oftentimes. We're looking here at a coin flip where the outcomes are binomial. We just have the two outcomes, head or tails. Similar concepts could be applied if you had, say, a survey and it was a yes or no survey, or if you had basically a political campaign or election where you had just basically two people and you were looking at a binomial kind of situation there, as opposed to looking at data that possibly is about the height of a person or something like that where you would expect it to be around a center point and have a bunch of different values related to it. Okay, so there's going to be some differences in terms of how we deal with the binomial, but the concepts are going to be similar in nature. Remember, when we're looking at a coin flip situation, we can kind of imagine that the entire population is, is basically an infinite number of coin flips. And therefore, we're going to take a sample of coin flips, meaning we're going to flip it some finite number of times and then try to derive something about that, about the entire population, which we can kind of imagine is an infinite population of uh, coin flips. So we, we started off by saying that the heads, H, is going to be represented with a zero, tails or T represented with a one, and our null hypothesis is going to be that basically the coin is a fair coin, meaning we would expect it to basically be 50-50. That's what we want to be, in essence, testing. The uh, alternative hypothesis, I should put an A, it should be an A, would be that it's something other than 50%, uh, right? So then we're going to test it out. And then the, the question would be, uh, how close are we or how good of evidence that, that, that it's going to be in, on, the, on the null hypothesis or is there enough evidence for us to reject, in essence, the null hypothesis? Now, if I was to plot the, the data out of uh, a particular flip, then I'm going to have just two bars here in our histogram. And of course, if we took the good old histogram and added up the outcomes, we can think of it as a percent because I'm representing... Uh, just these two outcomes at 0 and 1. So in other words, <clears throat> I had 16 here. 16 plus 14 is going to be 30. And if I'm looking at basically the tails, which I think is the second one, uh, it would be, you know, 16 out of 30. And I can think about it as, in essence, a percent in our histogram. So we can kind of think about it basically in terms of uh, percents is what we will be doing here. 
And we can restate the null hypothesis this way. We can say, well, H sub zero is that the mu, the central center point is going to be 50%, the mean. And the alternative, H sub A, is that it's not equal to, which is represented in Excel with these two signs. And there it is. Notice that everything is represented, including uh, all signs, including the equals, less than, e greater than, and not equal to. Right? So we have then, this is calculating one uh, of the samples. So this is just going to be one sample that we took up top. So up top, we have the samples going uh this is the number of different samples, and this is how many are in each sample. So each sample has 30 within it, and we did, I think, 100 samples. So going down this way, 100 samples of 30. So if we just did one uh, sample, this is going to be the outcome of just that first sample. So remember, the idea here is that we'd like, we'd like to have something that has that nice bell-shaped curve because that helps us to to make our predictions because it's uniform and we can basically define it with two numbers the middle point the uh mean or average and the spread the standard deviation so the middle point we can estimate with our sample if i didn't know the actual population mean we can we can make an assumption of it and then of course from the samples, we're going to hope that that's going to be close to the middle point. We can also take the standard deviation of the sample, but remember what we're looking for is something that's going to be a bell-shaped curve, and that is the standard deviation not of the population, because that might not be representing a normal distribution, not of one sample, because that also might not be representing a normal distribution, but rather of all of the means as though you can kind of imagine we took every possible combination in this case of 30 samples. In this case, we didn't take every combination of 30 samples, but we took a lot of different samples so we can test it that way. We took the mean of all of the samples of 30. So we took 100 samples of 30 and we took the mean of all of those. The standard deviation of the means is the one that could be, according to the central limit theorem, tending towards a normal distribution. Even if the original population is not, that's the idea. So we took the mean of the means with the average, and then we took the standard deviation of them. And so there's our standard deviation. This is a standard deviation of one sample. And we also estimated that standard deviation with a formula down here. And so in practice, we might not be doing a hundred different samples here of the mean, but have basically do one sample, right? But I still want to get the standard deviation of the means, not of the one sample. How do I do that? Well, then we have the formula and we can see here that using this formula, we get pretty close to what we got to when we did a hundred different samples, the hundred different samples attempting to estimate the number we would get if we did all possible combinations of samples of 30. All right, so then we plotted it out and we, we built our, uh, our normal distribution now. And, and that's going to be our nice normal distribution that we can make basically uh, predictions on. And we saw that any, the samples that we had are basically close to that middle point. Let's imagine building the same scenario now, but we're going to say that that the, we'll estimate the hypothesis that it's the middle point is 50%, but the actual data that we get is going to be not that, so that it's going to look like the coin is, is not a fair coin in reality. So if I say this is by, so once again, this is going to be a binomial type of distribution. Let's write down the same kind of concept. This time I'm going to have heads. Now, by the way, you could copy and paste everything and just kind of change it. But in case you're working from a blank worksheet, we'll just build everything from scratch here. So we're going to say heads is going to be represented with a zero. And then tails is going to be a T. And it's going to be represented with a one or a two. And that means that when I, when I generate my tables, randomly generated tables, I'm going to say if it is a one or a two, that's a tails and the heads is gonna be a one. So when we randomly generate, we should get around one third will be heads and two thirds will be tails, which will not be an even 50-50 distribution, which is what we're assuming in our hypothesis. 
giving us information that we might reject the hypothesis if it's far enough away and we'll get more defined on those terms later but this is the general idea so then i'm going to say h sub zero the let's just let's just do the the write the hypothesis this way this time we'll just say that uh this is going to be the mu i'm going to enter we'll let's say h sub zero is going to be the mu i'm going to add the mu by going to insert symbols and then i'm in the greek symbols but i already have it down here in the recents so i'm going to add that insert and then okay i'm going to click off of it and then go back in it and adjust this one right click on it and format the cells to make it a subscript and then boom okay and then i can copy that copy that roger out and change this to the a which is the alternative assumption and we're going to say that we're assuming that the it's going to equal 50 percent because we assume it's a fair coin and then we're going to get evidence possibly that that may not be the case and then try to determine how much evidence would we need to reject the null hypothesis similar to the idea of like if you're in a court case how much evidence would you need to reject the assumption the null hypothesis that the person is innocent right it's you can often equivalent this kind of process to a court case in like the united states where you're supposed to assume the person's innocent unless you get enough evidence to say otherwise right and then the question is how much evidence do you need so we have the count uh h well let's well let's now do a a sample so i'm going to make a skinny bg and i'm going to uh say that we're going to have our uh samples are going to go out this way so i'm going to call this s1 for sample one and then i'm going to have my flips these represent my flips and we're going to have once again 30 flips so i'm going to select these two drag it on out till i get to 30 flips 30 flips i'm going to be dizzy after i do 30 flip because you're not a gymnast it's a, the coin is flipping whatever i do the flips myself and i ha i land on my feet every time every time that's what i'm talking about all right anyways i don't know what i got distracted i'm going to select all of these we're going to go to the home tab font group let's make this black and white and then we'll center it all right and then and now i'm going to do a random generated number this is going to be rand between oh wait rand between but we want to have it between zero which is going to be representing a heads and three or no two because either a one or a two we're going to say represents a tails which means tails are going to happen two-thirds versus heads one-third of the time <laughs> So then I'm going to say, I'm going to copy that across. Let's copy that across. Boom. So there's my heads and tails. And so then I can go down here and we can put some data for it. We've got the, uh, the count. Let's just do the count of it. Uh, happen to be equals the count. We know it's 30, but I'll just count them just so we can sh check it. There's our 30. We have 30 of them. And let's say our, our, our heads. Uh, which is H and it's represented with a uh, zero. Let's, let's put this and then I'm going to say this equals then count if we want to count all the heads, all the zeros. So I'm going to select all of these, control shift to the right and then comma and we want to count it if it is a zero. So I'm just going to type in zero and enter boom so we have nine and now let's do the other one we got tails which is t and that's going to be a one and a two now i could say well i know it's going to be equal to 30 minus this right that's one way i can do it but i'd like to find a way that i can double check it and then add up my total which should add up to 30. so i'm going to try to do two count ifs equals count if and then I'm going to add them together. So I'm going to select this range. I'm going to say count those and then close it up. Wait, count those comma 
if it's a one, and then I'll close that up, plus I wanna also count the twos. So also count if, select the range again, the same range, and then count those if, comma, criteria, it's a two. So count the ones plus count the twos. And so then we get, we get 37, which doesn't seem right. And that's because I put a count instead of a count if. I want this, this one should be count if, sorry about that. Count if, let's try that. All right, that's why the double check is useful. So the total down here, then if I add those two up, this is 17 plus 13, adds up to my total count of 30. So that looks good. Let's look at the percentages then. If I take this as a percent, we have 14 heads over 30. Percentify to recognize, home tab, number percentify, recognize. And then we're gonna do the same thing here, 17 over 30, and then enter, percentify to recognize. And then we're gonna sum it up. We can do that with an alt equals, and then percentify. And so there it adds up to 100%, looks good. Let's go ahead and make that blue and bordered. Home tab, font group, bordered and blue. Now note that taking the mean of these is gonna be a little bit more complex because I'm not just representing one with a zero and the other with a two. So we'll get to that shortly. But for now, let's just now imagine that we have multiple different samples. So we're gonna say now we have 100 samples. So this is gonna be sample number two. We're gonna be copying this down, selecting those two items. I'm gonna copy that down to 100. 100 and then we'll make that black and white home tab font group making that black white let's make this a little bit smaller and then i'm going to select all of the random data and copy that down so that we're imagining we're doing a hundred different samples of 30 which is in essence simulate uh, simulating or simulating the idea that we're doing like all possible samples of 30 so i'm going to copy that down i'm going to then go to the home tab font group and make that blue if you don't have that blue you don't have to use that blue but if you want to i like it it's in the standard colors it's right here it's nice and calm nice calm blue ocean keeps you calm when you're working the numbers home tab font group and let's make that border let's go to the bottom make sure it's copied all the way down looks muy b to the n b n all right, so now what I'd like to do is, is take the mean of each of these 30 samples that we have. That's a little bit more complex because like I say, now we have two numbers that are, rep it's not just ones uh, and zeros representing our two choices. So I need to count them as though possibly they're just uh, the ones and zeros and that'll make it easier for us to do. So let's say, let's do it this way. Let's say we have H, the heads which is going to be all of the zeros and then we have the tails which are going to be all of the ones and the twos those are going to be the tails so let's see if i can just count all of the zeros so i'm going to say this equals count if tab selecting this range not the header or thing though and then i want to count if comma if it's a zero, count all of the zeros. And then I'll say enter. And so we get 13. Now I know the difference is gonna be equals 30 minus the 13, but I'd rather, I like to do another formula instead of just doing that, which is kind of like a plug, right? So I'm gonna say, do it this way, count if tabs, and then select all of this range again, but not the header, the row header. And I'm gonna say comma, count that if it's a uh, one, close it up, and plus also count if, hopefully I get the right one this time, that same range, this time I'm just gonna copy the range. I'm gonna copy that home on the range, copy that range. And then we're gonna say comma, count it if it's a two. So count all the ones, count all the twos, enter, and so we get 23, and so the total count, so the count, so the tote count, let's say, is gonna be equal to this plus this, which should equal 
30. All right, given that, then we can basically calculate our mean. So the mean that we want to calculate, I'm not going to take, uh, it's still, this should be basically zeros, right? And then the, the mean is going to basically be zero, so 12 times zero uh, uh, plus uh, 18 times one, right, over two, or basically 18, right? So let's do, let's show you what I mean. Instead of doing the average, I'm going to say this is going to be equal to all of the heads times zero, which is going to be zero, right? And then I'm going to say plus all of the tails, which are times one, because it's represented a one, which will just be the 18. Let's take that whole thing, bracket it, and then divide it by the number or count, which is 30. That's going to just be the average, which basically breaks down to it's just going to be 18, right, over 30. So I'm going to say, okay, so there we have it. Let's add it. Let's make that a percent and uh, add some decimals. So that was similar to it's just basically 18 because those are represent divided by 30 just to double just to show you and you get the same number, right? All right, so that's going to be it. Let's see if we can copy that down. Can I copy this down? Do I need to absolute reference anything? This one has uh, divided by uh, divided by 30. Okay, and so I don't think we need to absolute reference anything. So let's just select those, double click it down, dude. And then we're gonna go to the home tab, font group, make it blue and bordered. Let's make these the headers up top, selecting them. Home tab, font group, we'll make that black. We'll make it white, we'll make it centered. Let's make these a little bit skinnier. Those are too, too wide, too wide. This isn't, this isn't a modern movie production. Uh, anyway, let's do this. Okay, so then we can now take the mean of the mean. So I'm going to, I'm going to make this smaller. And then we're, we're going to say this is going to be the mean of the means. You could call that X bar. Maybe I'll put that up front. So X bar or maybe P bar because we're looking at kind of like probabilities right now, but I'll just call it X bar. And so we're going to say now this is going to be equal the average of the averages and then boom. And so that should tend more strongly towards the, the central point, which once again is not at the, what we would expect the 50%. We would think if we did a hundred times samples of 30, you would be close, getting close to the 50%. And then the STD of the means, which would, uh, is going to be equal to the STD sample of these control shift down and enter. And let's add uh, some decimals there. Do, 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 do. So we have those. All right, now we already calculated, I'm gonna say this is gonna be equal to, and I'll just pull this over from here and we'll describe it shortly. But we, we also calculated this P bar standard deviation, which is in essence our estimate of that number using this formula. So I'm gonna say enter, and then we're gonna say this equals this number standard error and that's basically this formula so we'll copy that formula over here dude and we'll put that over here just so we can see it and so so we're not using the correction factor which is this first bit we're just using the second bit let's make that some decimals and so you can see it's pretty close to the std of the means even though which means we're measuring the spread right now even though the means that we actually calculated are not hovering around the the center point that we were expecting in our hypothesis of 50%, right? So this is the actual uh, P percent of 50 that we're assuming for the population times one minus P over the number of samples, which is 30, how we calculated this number here. So let's make this uh, bordered blue and then we can make this uh, border blue. And then I can say, okay, what's my Z test for uh, this mean? In other words, 
how close in standard deviations is this to the middle point if we're thinking in terms of our middle point for the hypothesis being the 50%. So that's going to be equal to this x bar minus the I'm going to go over here to the uh, to the 50 percent that's what we assumed and take that and then divide it by that divided by the standard deviation which we estimated here and then we calculated with the formula so I'm going to use it with the formula here and then enter add some uh, decimals do 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 and so then I'll make that uh, blue and bordered. Let's do that here. Blue and bordered. So so it's getting close to two standard deviations out from the middle point that we would assume if the null hypothesis was true, which is that the middle point or mean of the bell curve would be at the 50%, uh, which is fairly high because if you get over 2% out, then that's going to be, you know, 95% is within the two standard deviations. So then we get to this question, of course, which is that how much evidence do I need in order for me to then say that the null hypothesis is not true because the default position is that it is, and we'll get into more defined you know, reasoning on that in future presentations. But the general idea is you have this out here. So if I go into the bell curve that we created from a prior presentation, I won't build it again. We, we're, we basically had uh, the X's that we have constructed, uh, the P of X, that's going to be with the norm.dist uh, function using the, uh, the mean. And if we knew the population mean, we could use the population mean. In this case, we're using the mean here, which was the 50.33 and the standard deviation uh, of the means, which we picked up here. And then we also calculated our z scores so over here we then have our in essence bell curve with the x's on the bottom which you could also call the p's of the probabilities and then the z score and so the middle point here is assumed to be at basically the 50 percent if the null hypothesis were true and we're basically somewhat over here we saw that it was around like two on the z-score which would be out here so you can see it two different ways we could say all right this was at the 67 which would be 1.87 on the z-score right so here's 67 which is around 1.87 on the z-score now that's still in this case kind of within you know it's not quite at the uh at the above the two percent but it's clearly off to the right so then of course the question is going to be how much evidence do we need to have to be able to say that the null hypothesis that it's at 50 percent uh is not correct right and so we'll get into some more kind of formal you know definitions on that there is some arbitrariness in it uh in terms of how confident we're going to be but we would like to be able to define uh, whether or not we think the middle point is correct and then we can also possibly define how confident we are of that, uh, uh, which could give us another bit of kind of specificity <laughs> in how we're going to be using the terminology, which we'll talk about later. But the general idea, of course, would be we're going to make the assumption first, basically the hypothesis, and then we're going to collect our evidence and see if whether or not it, it lines up to the hypothesis. And then our question will be how far off does it need to be for us to reject the original hypothesis and so on.